All right, everybody. I'm planning to get banned from YouTube for life. But you know, I I I just want to look at the new movie by Disney Marvel Thor Ragnarok, which I'm a big fan of. I really like the movie. I went to see the movie. I paid cash money to see the movie, and uh, took uh, including myself four people to see the movie. So I'm a big fan. But something's been haunting me about this movie, and I, this is kind of a shorter version of a longer video I want to I want to do on this. But the point of this is: Is Thor of Ragnarok? Is it trolling Angela Merkel? Now we're gonna watch this. We're gonna watch the trailer, and I recommend you go see the movie because I really like it. But then I'm gonna ask you this: Is this some type of subconscious trolling of Angela Merkel? Are we seeing a fiction or a fantasy of the crisis in Europe? Keep in mind as you watch this video. That's why I've kind of juxtaposed uh, some controversial things here. We got the rape crisis in Sweden. We got the attacks, the bombings, uh, everything that's going on in Europe. The European Union, the Catalonia is trying to break away, and then we have uh, Angela Merkel and. It, to me, I think you'll see that there is some type of trolling going on here that I believe that actually exists. And I don't know if the director did this deliberately or it was done uh, subconsciously or we're seeing you know some kind of um, phenomena of Jungian collective, uh, the collective psyche of the Western Europeans re rebelling against it. So let's watch the trailer. And then we'll, I'll, we'll watch it again and we'll make commentaries. And you, it, you'll see that I think that actually this movie is actually trolling Angela Merkel. So much has happened since I last saw you. I lost my hammer like yesterday, so that's still pretty fresh. And then I went on a journey of self-discovery. Where I met you. You have no idea. Hell of the goddess of death has invaded Asgard. Oh, I've missed this. And you and I had a fight recently. Did I win? No, I won. Easily. Doesn't sound right. Oh, uh, it's true. Asgard is dead. And it'll be reborn in my image. I thought you'd be glad to see me. I need to stop her here and now. To prevent Ragnarok, the end of everything. So they're putting together a team. Like the old days. Surprise! This will be such fun. Hello. Hi. He's a fighter. Here we go! Yeah. I'm not a queen or a monster. I'm the goddess of death. What were you the god of again? Okay, there's the, there's the trailer. We're the same, you and I. Just a couple of hot-headed fools. Yeah, same. Hulk like fire, mm. Thor like water. Oh, kind of both like fire. But Hulk like raging fire, Thor like smoldering fire. <laughs> and we'll talk about it later, but they also, you know, um, which I liked, is they played uh, Led Zeppelin's the immigrant song during this uh, movie. So I, I'm pretty sure that we're seeing some type of either the director um, has is putting a, a subliminal message here. He's trolling Angela Merkel. He's trolling the EU. He's trolling the policies that are causing Europe, the European Union to become destabilized. Or maybe we're seeing something of the collective unconscious with these characters like Thor and 
you know, that go back deep into the collective psyche of the West, especially the Norse people, the Swedish people, the Germanic people, the of the Northern Europeans, that we're actually seeing a form of collective unconscious where these characters are actually kind of quote unquote coming alive. And in the American sense, Hulk has been around for you know generations, and that's another form of like American. The 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 Ameri So we could. So I want to do a more in depth video, but I wanted to get this out here. Talking about Hulk, of course, you have like the American. I, I think he embodies the American concept. It, you know, a powerful, out of control, um, you know, monster being entity that has to be tamed and brought back to you know under control, under science and understanding. So I think Hulk, I would go out on a limb and say he represents America. I I think that the uh, goddess of death that we saw in here, that. I think that is representative of Angela Merkel. If you remember that one section, she says, you know, I'm not a queen or a monster. I'm the goddess of death. And you, you know, so, so is Angela Merkel the goddess of the death of the European Union or the death of Europe as we knew it? Well, she certainly seems that way. She's certainly instituting uh, policies that are leading to mass uncontrolled migration, which was furthered along by Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and the neoliberals and neocons in the United States, to deep, which is starting to destabilize Europe. And so it's my contention that, that this is a form of trolling, whether it's by the producer, the, the um, director, of Thor Ragnarok, or if it's a subliminally subconscious Jungian phenomena that we're witnessing here. So we're gonna, I'm gonna step through this again. I want to do this a lot more in depth because I've been fascinated with this movie, and because remember, Thor is a he's a Norse god. He's from the north, from Sweden, Norway. He's from the north, so he represents these those people. And if you've seen the movie, and I don't want to put a lot of spoilers in here, there is a scene where they are in Norway. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. There is a scene where they're actually in Norway, Norway on Earth, and that is it's a pivotal part of the story towards the end, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then there's a line in the movie that, you know, Asgard, it's not a place, it's a people. So that, that, that line kind of haunted me through the movie as I watch it. So we're going to step through this. Uh, I will, I'm going to do just a, this is just an introduction here, but let's start over here. So this is Asgard. So much has happened since I last saw you. I lost my hammer, like yesterday, so that's stupid. So you see the character here, uh, Thor, he's had his hair, head shaved. Actually, if you see the movie, it's kind of funny who shaves his head. So he loses all his hair, very Samson-like character of the Bible. He's, you know, his, he's lost, his hammer is destroyed here. Pretty fresh. See. So his hammer was destroyed. I went on a journey of self And you've seen that here he has his hair, but the next scene he has his hair head shaved, much like Samson. So is this, are we seeing a, an image here of the demasculinization of Western men? I, I, I don't know. But it seems that that was what I'm picking up through my subconscious feeling, that that's what we're seeing. He throws the hammer, the goddess of death grabs the hammer and destroys it. That's the symbol of Thor's masculine power, his masculine authority, and it's destroyed, utterly destroyed, as you saw right there. And then he ends up, uh, you know, in, on this junk world. Now, is this junk world, and I can't remember the name of it because I don't follow the comics that closely, but is this junk world representative of a dystopian European Union, a dystopian West? It seems to be. Covering. Very, you know, uh, so of course now Thor is allied with uh, the Hulk. The Hulk, of course, is an American scientist that finds out the hidden powers of the human mind, and he becomes this, this large creature. Again, I'm not a big comic book fan. I, I like Marvel, but I'm, I I don't know a lot about it, and I don't I don't pretend to be a fanboy. But so is are we seeing here a representation? of American power, out of control American power. We've seen the problems of 
in the invasions in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. We've seen the destabilization of Libya, the destabilization of Syria, the destabilization of Egypt, the destabilization of Tunisia. Now Spain is destabilizing. Catalonia wants to break away because they don't want to be part of this. We've seen the Brexit. So are we seeing here uh, a union? And again, these are just hypotheses I'm playing it out here. But are we seeing something from the subconscious mind and or the director of this film or the writer? Are we picking up something from the writer that may be even from his subconscious or her subconscious? I don't know. I'm sure it was a team of writers that wrote the storyline. Did they, is this what an image of out of control American power and the Norse Western power, the, the older forms of masculinity that Thor represents versus which is much more it's powerful more masculine more appealing to the Western mind but it's not this out of control Hulk so you have these two masculine forces that are contending to this film you have the American green Hulk monster and then you have the more refined blonde Nordic um, uh, Nor Norwegian Swedish Thor and this two forms of masculinity are clap uh, clashing one is totally out of control and is untamed, and the other one has been somewhat, uh, 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 somewhat castrated by the loss of the, of, uh, I believe it's called Melianor, the, the Thor's hammer. So I think that's an interesting note here that we're seeing two forms of masculinity here that are clashing with each other. So let's go on here a little bit. Why are we? Yeah, so that's yeah. David Bannon, right? He's the scientist that turns into a home. Hello, the goddess of death has invaded Asgard. Oh, I've missed this. And you and I had a fight recently. Did I win? No, I won. He's Great saying, fight scene, by the way. Sound right? Oh, uh, that's true. So, so now I want to juxtapose this character goddess of death um, and Angela Merkel so are we seeing here that here's here's a person who's now in so Angela Merkel's probably the most powerful woman in the world um, she runs Germany the the engine of European the, she uh, the the engine of Europe she is the that's a manufacturing powerhouse of Europe uh, the German people are very effective so if you listen to this next line here as God is dead and it'll be reborn in my image. So that that's that line kind of haunted me because in a way Angela Merkel, she's she doesn't have children. She's married, but she doesn't have children. So she's gonna she has rebranded Germany. She, I don't think any of us are gonna argue that Angela Merkel has definitely put her stamp on Germany, and she has rebranded Germany, and it is being reborn in the vision of Angela Merkel. There is no doubt in my mind. I hope there's no doubt in your mind. So that line tends to say to me that we're seeing some type of trolling and or we're seeing a, a, a message from the director or the writers or we're even, this is something from the sub, their subconscious or their unconscious mind or getting something from the collective unconscious that the Western psychic, the, the psychology of all the Western, of us Westerners, if you will, is warning us, hey, there's a problem here. Germany's being reborn in a new image and in turn Germany's rebranding all of Europe. So my contention is here, this is just a hypothesis, there's no way to prove any of this, of course. But my, my contention is we're seeing some type of phenomena where these two characters are linked. They're linked in my mind, maybe no one else's, but they seem to be linked. And of course, she has a lot of people at her beck and call. So who do these people represent here? And these, in these movies, these people are also always the faceless people. This character here is interesting. I don't want to do any spoilers, but he's a duplicitous character. But he's, but in the end, you know, he plays a pivotal role. He's kind of a comedy relief character. I don't want to say a lot about him, but in the end, he's going to play a pivotal role, a very Gollum from the Lord of the Rings type role. I don't know what he represents. Is he the beta male, the beta cuck male, the guy that goes along to get along, and in the end he decides, hey, I, do, I can't go along with this anymore. I think this character here is uh, represents that. I thought you'd be glad to see me. I need to stop her here and now to prevent Ragnarok, the end of everything. 
So Ragnarok. So are we witnessing as Angela Merkel bringing on Ang and and the and the United States is part of this problem too, the mass migration. Are, is this the Ragnarok of Europe as we knew it for the Europeans? That's what I'm saying. Are we are we witnessing that phenomena? Uh, from is this what the author intended of the storyline? This is what the director intended. Um, but the message seems to me to be there. Uh, again, there's no way to prove this. You can't ever prove it. But it seems that we have this destruction of Asgard. We have these two masculine forces. We have the Hulk. We have Thor. We have this character who's female who's destroying everything. Well, there's another female that some people contend is certainly revamping Germany in her image. Instead of putting together a team, like the old days. Surprise. Now, of course, Loki. Uh, he he always this this actor is a great actor. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he he he's he's the unpredictable trickster character of Joseph Campbell of Carl Jung. He's the he's the ultimate, the penultimate trickster character. I don't really know. I don't really have a lock on Loki's character in this movie, other than he's actually Loki. He's the he's the trickster. But in the end. The trickster character, the Indiana Jones character, he does side. I don't again. I don't want to do spoilers, but he doesn't side with the dark side. He sides with another side, as you would see in the movie. Guys, this would be such fun. See, Thor has his haircut. <laughs> They're fighting together. So we have a third form of masculinity. If I can get back there. So we we've had we've had the Hulk. The American out of control masculinity that's that's not contained properly. Then we have Thor, who seems to be the better balance of the strong Western uh, Nordic, Germanic, Anglo Ang Anglo Saxon type uh, character. And then we have Loki. He's the trickster character. So we now have three forms of masculinity of Western masculinity that we're dealing with. We're dealing with the trickster figure, the Indiana Jones figure, the shape shifting male figure. Then we have Thor, who's the kind of steady, the person that always does right. Um, women would prefer Thor, if you will. And then we have Hulk, the out-of-control American masculine psyche, if you will. That's just my take on this. Hi. Don't have glasses. He's a fighter. I would awful say that we might have uh, a few more male. Pro, uh, archetypes. I can get back there, and I'm sorry I'm not. So, uh, of course, he's. I think he's called the mastermind of the world, <coughs> and uh, uh, and I can't remember the actor's name. It, I'm having trouble with the actor's names today. I'm sorry. He does a marvelous job, by the way. Uh, and so he's another masculine character in this this movie. So he is kind of the effeminate, metrosexual type male who is in charge. I, I would say that, in my opinion, hypothesized, this is kind of a European uh, uh, plutocrat, you know, from Brussels. The, the guy that's in charge, he's, you know, he's, he's dictating from, from afar, and he oversees this big junk wasteland, and he, he oversees the games of bread and circuses. We also see here two female characters that are kind of interesting juxtaposition here as well. This is a very masculine female, obviously. She's played as a very masculine female. He's a very feminine male. <coughs> so are we seeing some type of recognition here of uh, very masculine females? And we have very effeminate males. So this is an interest. I really don't know how to lock onto this. And then we have the more warrior female here. She's actually, I don't want to give away who she, who, who her who she, her real identity is because I don't want to do a spoiler, but you can see this juxtaposition here between the two types of females, both warriors, one very masculine, not so effeminate, and very, and of course she's very lovely, very effeminate, um, you know, she, or she has a, a breastplate that augments, you know, you know, her, uh, her beauty. And we have the very effeminate male. I would say he's more of a Brussels, 
uh, bureaucratic type person of the 21st century. So we have all these male roles that are being put through this movie. This is more the conflicted character I talked about. He was the little guy that I was pointing out. This is another male role model. Uh, and someone better than me would have to figure this out. But he is the conflicted man. The man that goes along to get along, as we say here in Indiana. He goes along to get along. But he plays a pivotal role in the end. So this is another role model. So, we, so we've had the Hulk. We've had Thor. We have uh, Loki. We have the mastermind. I think he's <clears throat> the mastermind of, of the junk planet, who's very effeminate. Uh, and we have the and so we have this character who's kind of the conflicted, uh, practical, utilitarian. Like, well, I don't really like what's happening, but I'm going to go along to get along because what can you do? And so, but in the end, we'll see that if you've watched the movie, you'll see what happens with this character. <laughs> So again, we have the, the beautiful female character. Uh, <coughs> she's playing. Uh, she plays a pivotal role. In the movie. Yeah! I'm not a queen or a monster. I'm the goddess of death. So that is a kind of interesting line. They're going through some kind of hyper. I'm the goddess of death. So here we see that the goddess of death. Uh, has really emasculated and is, you know, got Thor literally by the throat. And I'll have to do a much better video because these actors do such a good job. But are we seeing here again, is this some kind of vague reference to Angela Merkel, the European Union, the destruction of masculinity? Is that what we're seeing here? I think we're seeing some type of trolling here. And this may be coming from the collective unconscious. It, Jung, of course, had the famous dream of the death of Siegfried and uh, that was right prior to the First World War where, where Europe basically committed suicide during the First World War and Jung had that famous dream that's been related in his work uh, and he dreamt of that character being slain and he woke up thinking that that was something to relate to Germany once again the character of Siegfried this time we see Freud Germany once again you know from the First World War and the Second World War and Germany played a part in the Cold War because it was divided in half, it was reunited. And here yet again in the 21st century, Europe, Germany, for better or worse, is at the center again of the transformation of Europe. For better or worse, we don't know yet, but it's definitely there. And in this, I think we're seeing a juxtaposition between Angela Merkel and uh, I think her name's Hella in this movie. What were you the god of again? So female characterizations in here um, are really three. There's a kind of a masculine female. There's the warrior, a Valkyrian female. Uh, this is, if I can go back here. That's her. She's the Valkyrian. She's the strong Western female. So here we have the three prototype archetypes of male power kind of uncontrolled, brutish, kind of the warrior, uh, you know, and then we have kind of the sorceress uh, thinker, the shapeshifter, the trickster figure here of Loki. And we have one female, kind of the strong, resolute female character. What were you the god of again? So here I think we see that Thor who lost Melianor, the, the uh, hammer, and in this scene, He seems to have regained the power of the masculine, the Western power of the ma man, uh, without the use of the Melianor. No, so, we're the same, you and I, just a couple of hot-headed fools. So, I, I'd kind of be interested in people's take on this because movies, uh, uh, movies are very powerful. They have a lot of messages. Uh, I, you know, I have, you know, I have the, you know, the, on this here, I have the juxtaposition of the rape crisis in Europe, the, the uncontrolled immigration, the fear that people are feeling uh, in Europe. We have Angela Merkel with her rebranding of Europe and Germany in particular that, she, you know, she, 
she is basically rebranding Germany in her image. She doesn't have children, but she's going to rebrand Germany in her image. Are we seeing some type of connection from the collective psyche, the writers? Are they trolling Angela Merkel? Are they trolling European Union? Are they trolling the United States? I, I, I don't know. But it keeps haunting my, my subconscious that we're seeing something like that. So that's the question. Is Thor Ragnarok a uh, union, a uh, uh, collective unconscious trolling of what's happening in Europe? Because you know, the Asgard. If you see the movie, that the Asgard is being destroyed, it's been overrun, and you know we have this female character who's decided to destroy everything. And these people, uh, you know, Hulk and Thor and Loki, uh, all of them are, you know, they're they're at an extreme disadvantage here. But they, of course, they fight back. And then we see the kind of the uh, juxtapos juxtaposition of different types of female archetypes in this movie. So that's my thought on that. I just kind of was interested. This kind of stuff interests me. Um, I wanted to put these different concepts here. We have, you know, Angela Merkel. We have, uh, you know, the, there's there's the controversy of, of what's happening to uh, Sweden, the European Union, how it's being transformed. And then we have this movie with all the male archetypes I talked about, the female archetypes, are, there's less, there's far less female archetypes in the movie than male. So it's a very masculine uh, energy movie. But is that what we're seeing? And then we have a female character that's the goddess of death. And she, you know, she is going to destroy uh, Asgard and remake it in her image. Is this a troll of Angela Merkel? I don't know. So I'll be interested in your thoughts. Uh, I like to do these kind of concepts to see how information is flowing in and out of the, the internet, in and out of the human psyche, internet, how it, it weaves in, 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 the, in the world and how it impacts how we think and feel about things. So uh, as always, as I always say, try to keep studying and keep learning.